We hear this thing now called a cochlea implant. From your experience, who and at what ages is cochlear implants uh, considered? Uh, cochlear implants are considered for, we're talking only about pediatrics now, of we're course. Only, we're, we're little people here. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, cochlear implants are considered for um, infants or young children uh, who have severe to profound levels of hearing loss. What number would that be? More than 50? Uh, no, much more than that, actually. More than 75 or 80. 75 or 80? Yeah. 75, 80 or, or worse. Right. Uh, uh, generally bilateral, okay, has been the history of it. Um, although the criteria for for uh, children who are eligible for cochlear implants is actually growing, and the current trend um, is bilateral implantation. It used to be that uh, in, even in a child who was born deaf in both ears, they only got a single cochlear implant, and these days they're seeing the benefits of uh, implanting both sides, and that's becoming more and more common. Why is there a better benefit from two to over one? Uh, kind of for similar reasons that uh, it, it's better to wear two hearing aids if you have hearing loss in both ears than only one. Uh, when, you're, when you have better hearing in one ear than the other, for whatever reason, either because you're wearing only one hearing aid or because you were born with a hearing loss in only one ear, there are a number of things that are really impossible for a person with asymmetrical hearing um, to do well. One of those things is to be able to localize the source of the sound, to be able to find where the sound is coming from, or to be able to judge the distance of the sound from them. Both of those things, you know, contribute to a sense of disorientation, actually, uh, in, in, in children or anyone. Um, but another thing that they see is very important is that the ability to discriminate speech in the presence of competing background noise um, or other auditory distractions uh, it gets much, much better when you're hearing equally well from both sides. And all those things are very important for young children so who are growing the, up. So, kind of thinking, how much of a loss, it has to be like 75 or 80 decibels? Or worse. Or worse. Or worse. Yeah. But if you have 50, does try not to do a cochlear implant to try to use hearing aids uh, first? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I, I don't think that I've ever seen a child with a 50 decibel hearing loss who was a candidate for a cochlear implant because those children, that's called a moderate hearing loss, and those children do very well with hearing aids. Uh, when they do put a cochlear implant, uh, what do you do to make sure that they are adequately working? Is there a test that you would do to see if the cochlear implant is working correctly? Because the surgeon is a surgeon. Needs people like you to do definitive evaluations. Is that correct? Um, I personally um, I, I do, I'm not involved uh, in working with children after they've been implanted. My personally, my role um, in children with cochlear implantation is the early diagnostic role and the referral role and the parent counseling role beforehand. Um, but once a child uh, is a candidate for an implant, uh, they go to a center, a cochlear implant center, some of the major medical so it's centers a whole, in New York have it. Whole, whole it's group a whole of people. Team. It is. Whole it's team. a whole team. It's a team that will consist of a, a psychologist to evaluate the family um, and the child and sort of to try to determine the, the likelihood of, su of success because a child with a co cochlear implant is not a cure and it's not a miracle. And just putting a cochlear implant on a child will, will not guarantee normal hearing, normal language development, normal function, normal, uh, you know, success in school, those children need support and those families need support. So a psychologist, an education evaluator, a speech language so pathologist, a surgeon, it's not a cure. It's a great, great tool. And actually the children who, uh, the, the, the evidence suggests very strongly that two children, uh, both with severe profound hearing loss is similar in nature, one who gets a cochlear implant and one who doesn't. In a typ typical case, the child with the cochlear implant will, will succeed better, will uh, come along faster, will have less speech impairment, they'll have clearer speech. The results are very good. Uh, you asked earlier about the age of a child. Um, uh, the, they're basically implanting infants since they're being diagnosed so early now with the newborn hearing screening programs between 9 and 12 months of age, as early as that. Uh, the only exception to that is children um, who have meningitis and, if, and hearing loss as a result of that. And those children are eligible to be implanted earlier. We're seeing less and less meningitis, they thank God, from the vaccine. So that's going to, we hope, become a thing of the past almost. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still not a panacea. But if a kid got a cochlear implant in his ear, does he hear like you and I hear? No, he does not. He does not. Um, uh, 
the, I don't think that they can achieve the, the auditory thresholds that normal hearing people can. I have seen cochlear implantation evaluations um, in this office, and uh, they're coming in around 30, 35 decibels or 25, 30 decibels, which is borderline mild hearing. Um, also, the quality of the sound is not something that you and I are accustomed to. Are they getting better? They are always improving on cochlear implants, and I think that the, the, the next big thing is going to be a totally, completely implantable device. I don't quite know how far away we are from that you yet. You replace the cochlear, the whole thing? No, to replace the, the piece that sits on the outside, because a cochlear implant consists of a number of components. Some of it is implanted under the skin uh, in the cochlea, and, and in the, in the mastoid bone, uh, but some of it is outside the ear. A large uh, behind the ear, something that looks like a hearing aid, as well as a magnet that's placed on the head. I think that the newest thing is going to be a completely implantable device. A lot of parents are waiting with bated breath for that.